Hey everybody, uh, thank you for joining us for those that are on live this morning. And if you're not live, thank you for watching On Demand. My name is Dimitri Lylan and I want to welcome you to the .NET the Desktop Developer Community Standup. I'm here with two guests, Ryan and Miguel. Thank you guys for coming on the show today. Thanks. So Thanks Ryan and Miguel are from the Windows team. They're going to be talking to us about a bunch of cool stuff today, but I want them to introduce themselves for a minute. So Ryan, why don't you start? Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Ryan Demopoulos. I'm a program manager lead. I uh, work on the UWP. XAML platform, which is becoming, and you'll learn more about that, the uh, WinUI uh, XAML platform. And I've been working on uh, UI platforms of various kinds uh, here at Microsoft for about 11 years now. So I'm really excited to be here and uh, chat with you guys. Awesome. Hey, I'm Miguel Ramos. I'm a program manager exactly the same team as Ryan. So working in the with the engineering team in all the XAML, XAML platform with WinUI and more and more stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining. Uh, we got some great demos and conversations coming, but I want to start kick us off with some news. So I'm going to switch to my machine for a second here. And uh, I want to start off by basically um, giving the community heads up about three pieces of news that landed in the last week or so. Uh, one thing is our friends in Xamarin forums have landed hot reload capability as a public preview. This is something the community has been really excited about. Uh, so kind of to level set the conversation, what is hot reload? Hot reload is the ability to um, edit your application's look and feel while it's running and, and basically change XAML while the application is running. So WPF and UWP has had this capability for a while now. It's something that I talked about on the last community stand-up. It's something I'll talk about at the end of this community stand-up as well. We're constantly looking to improve that for UWP and WPF developers. But Xamarin Forms developers never had this capability. So Pierce, Maddie, and others um, you know, did a bunch of work to announce this to the community. It's really exciting. They have all the details on this blog. Go take a look at it. It's up on the Xamarin blog for if, if you search for Xamarin Hot Reload, this is one of the first topics that comes up, and I'll put the notes into the show notes as well. So just know that. And this is the really, really exciting news for the community. Another piece of news this week is Hot of the Presses, Visual Studio 2019 updates are shipping. So 16.2 became generally available, and 16.3 first public preview shipped. We're really excited from the tools team where I work. So I work on the XAML tooling team. Think about the, the designer, think about Hot Reload, think about the XAML editor, anything for WPF and UWP developers. So from my perspective, this is my ship vehicle. This is how my features land uh, for you, the developer. So whenever there's an update, that gives me a chance to ship cool new features. And we have quite a few things in the works. We'll talk about that at the end of the show after um, Ryan and, and Miguel do some demos for you on other topics. So that's something that you know keep an eye on. Uh, as releases come out, there's definitely news. And I'll talk more about it at the end. And finally, a community release. I want to just call this out. Uh, Brian Lagunas and others are working on a library for Prism, which supports UWP, um, supports Xamarin Forum, supports WPF developers. This is an MVVM framework. And 7.2 is a big release for them. They added .NET Core 3 support. The community has super, been super excited for this release. Anybody that cares about MVVM frameworks, and especially everybody uses Prism, relies on these updates. So huge thank you for our community to continuing to, to build these amazing libraries. I mean, think about it. This is a community-driven project. Where would we be without the community? So thank you so much for all the work that's going into that. So I wanted to just call out these three releases. And for the rest of the show, we're going to be talking about WinUI, XAML Islands as the primary two topics with our two guests here. And then towards the end, I'm just going to close it out by giving some updates on XAML tooling news. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to my friends here. All right. Thank you, Dimitri. That's thank a you. wonderful news. I really like it. Yeah. Actually, I really like the presentation of Prism. It's a wonderful MVVM framework. Yes, definitely. I love it. Yes, I've, I've used it on two production applications back in the day. So I I love Prism because it made my, my life possible and made two really complicated applications possible. Yeah, for sure. So let me talk a little about all the different Windows frameworks, presentation framework that we have in right now in, in Microsoft. So just to clarify several concepts. First of all, we, everyone knows that we have Win32 with the Microsoft Foundation classes. It's a native framework for C++ developer. We also have WinForms. We also have WPF or .NET. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't require any kind of presentation, right? Everyone, everyone knows about that. Of course. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have UWP. Uh, just to so heads up that UWP is more than a presentation framework. It is a lot of things, and it's something I want just to clarify today. So just remember that UWP, you can create 
application in native with C++ and also with .NET. Just, just to clarify a little more the things, so you can even mix different frameworks. You can grab a, a WinForm framework and you can put content of WPF and also you can grab a WPF framework and you can put content of WinForm. It's something that you can mix today. Even more, if you're doing some, doing some kind of hacking, you can call from WinForms to uh, NFC, you can do all these kind of things, right? This is the thing that we have today. Talking a little more about what is UWP. So UWP is a lot of things, too many things. The UWP is uh, the packaging story within NSIS, is the UWP application model, all these kind of things about the edge. Uh, you can resume, you can run the application, you can stop the application. It's the sandbox of security where the application is running. Also, UWP is about enable application can be is the, put in the store. Uh, is the WinRT APIs, the Windows 10 API that support a lot of things, a lot of the scenario. We have something for HAML, so the UWP HAML, we have input, we have composition, and UWP is also all the WinRT components. So when someone is talking about UWP, we are talking about all this stuff. Yeah, lots right? of pieces to it, definitely. Exactly. Yes. So, sure. So if we grab this picture and we will we go into more details, Let's grab the SAML picture, in, and in the SAML picture, you can find that SAML is a really complicated thing itself. So we have the SAML, and SAML also is also is the framework with all these dependency properties, resources, all these things with the binding system. We have a huge set of controls that we support a lot of things, so people can create beautiful application. Of course, we are applying this kind of thing called fluent design. Uh, some, some of it's also all this animation system, it's about hosting things and more and more stuff. But if this is not good enough, we also have something called WinUI, which is extending the capability of SAML. Um, if people are not happy with that, we also have the Windows Community Toolkit. So, and more and more and more. Yeah. So, this, this is the picture of SAML. So, let me just go very quickly about show some, some specific sites and demos about how people can find more information about SAML and how they can create application in SAML. So we have three important links. One link is about the SAML control gallery. So if you are new in SAML and you want to know exactly what are the things that you can create with, with SAML, I recommend to you to go into this, uh, this link. So let me just open an app, the SAML control gallery. Sample control gallery. I'm going to move this. I'm going to start the presentation. Okay. It doesn't show up. It's oh no! We're, <laughs> our machine is giving us fun. Nice. We have the sample control gallery. You go. can install this application here. So if you are new in SAML and you want to learn how, what, uh, how you can use the R control, or you want to investigate what, what, what are the things that you can do with R technology, this is the perfect app where you can find almost everything. Yeah. You click in some, some link, you see the, the, the control, running the control, you can check you know, online exactly what the, what the control is doing. You can have the, uh, a snippet of the code, you can copy and paste, you can do all, almost everything. And we are updating this uh, SAML control gallery to the latest builds always. Actually, you can participate on that because it's in, in the open, it's in GitHub. That's right. So you can click in there and you will see this site where you can download the source code, you can make pull requests, you can have apps to make much better. Apps. Yes, so one question, I mean, uh, what kind of applications is this covering? This is covering just the UWP stack, right? Specifically, yep. this is not Xamarin or WPF, just to make sure people don't go looking for that here. This is only UWP. Yeah, okay, just making sure. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It demonstrates UWP and it demonstrates uh, WinUI uh, controls as well as the ones that are built right into the box. Right, awesome. Nice, so another link that I want to show you is wing, uh, is slash WinUI. This is our place where we are uh, putting new controls and uh, maybe Ryan, you can explain a little more what is this yeah. is of Wing UI. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to explain it. So um, one thing I should be clear about here too is um, 
we sort of have two versions of WinUI that we sometimes talk about. We call it the WinUI 2 series and the WinUI 3 series. Um, so I'll, t I'll give maybe a bit of background around WinUI 2 and then I think we'll go into WinUI 3 in a little bit. Um, but um, the Windows UI library was really created basically for two primary reasons. The first one and probably the biggest one is that um, prior to WinUI, whenever we created new features or new controls, um, those are only available on the latest version of Windows because the XAML framework shipped, the UWP XAML framework shipped with the latest version of Windows. Yeah. Um, and what we found uh, amongst all of the different application developers that were using our technology was that it was just really hard for them to have to wait until their user base had sort of the minimum version of when that feature came available for them to use it. So yeah, we created- and, and this is different than WPF developers were used to, right? They were used to just getting- That's right. WPF yeah. would, would move forward and they would get controls as opposed to needing Windows itself to move forward. It's kind of a bigger rock to follow. Absolutely, yeah. For for many years, we because we shipped as part of the OS integrally in there, all of those new features just came with the newest version. It was just hard for people to actually use them. It was also hard for us to get feedback on those features because you know, we'd make this new feature, we'd have a small population of people who could use it because they were on the blistering edge of Windows, but uh, many of our developer customers just weren't able to go and use it. So we created WinUI um, to solve that problem, and WinUI uh, is a library of controls and some features that ship to in-market versions of Windows 10. We ship down, I think it's to RS2 right now, we've been talking about bumping it to RS3. Yep. Um, and so uh, now whenever we go and create a new control, like the teaching tip control that released in uh, 2.1, it's available on versions of Windows that are already in the market. Um, so uh, people can go and use it. All of you can go and use it uh, uh, immediately and, and, and take advantage of all those new features. The other big thing we wanted to do with WinUI, just in general, whether it's two series or three series, is we wanted to start to tra transition our technology and our team and the way we interact with people to open source. Um, and so that's a, another big aspect of it. UWP XAML has been, um, uh, since its existence, a closed source thing. We wanted to start to interact more on GitHub. We wanted to start to open up that source um, and make it so that we can just have a better way of interacting with the developer community. So that's that's the two big things that WinUI 2 really brought. Yeah, I think it's, it's really cool. awesome that you know we, we can say that in 2019, so much of Microsoft is open source, and even <laughs> Windows, part of Windows developer platform in a big way is looking to be open source. I think it's really awesome. Yeah, it's been a big wave of things, and it's been really exciting to be a part of. Yeah. yeah. I asked to demonstrate all these wars. So if you go to the WinUI site, you will see exactly all the source code over there. But you can also open issues, and you will see how we are replying to all these open issues. We are uh, making decisions based on all this feedback. Uh, if you will even more, even the specs that will, the program manager writes for all the control are open source as well. So yes, we do are specking in the open, it's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> so if you go to acad.ns, uh, wingui, slash, I believe it's specs. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yeah, we have the specs over there. For example, you go to active, you will find the expect where we are working. So you can even switch to a different branch, for example, let's take a look what are other PNs working right now. For example, the, oh, Ryan Corner sounds nice. So Chigi Chigusa is working on all this stuff, which is, I don't see over there, but believe me, it's about making the control a little more rounder in the corners. Yep. But you can investigate, take a look, participate in all these aspects that we are doing on the Opium. Awesome. Wonderful. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Well, so we have this uh, UWP platform. We also have another WinForm, another desktop technologies in Windows like WPA, WinForm, Win32. It could be great if we can to use all these fancy things that we have in UWP in Win32 applications, right? So, and this is the reason why we create Summer Islands. Awesome, yeah. With Summer Island, the thing that we are doing is just remember that UWP is a lot of things. So we have a lot of components. The thing that we are doing is just grabbing all the SAML content that we have in UWP and making possible that you can use all these SAML thing framework inside of different platform. For example, Win32 application, uh, NFC application can use 
can create a SAML island and put SAML content inside that. Exactly the same with WinForms and WPF. So the picture that we have today about SAML island is something like that. So we have this kind of platform the operating system where we have the SAML framework, we are chipping with the, with the, with the framework, as Ryan said before. Um, SAML Island is something that is wholly uh, cheap in the latest version of Windows 10, which is the 19.03, right? This is the reason why you can see in the bottom this uh, uh, yellow. Uh, yeah, so, so, ba so basically, like you, you can make this work with your WPF, WinForm, or C app, but then that app must be running in 1903 of Windows or higher in order for the XAML island to work correctly. Correct, right. correct. So we have the, all these pieces in the platform. Uh, on the top of that, we are creating some kind of helpers for WPF and WinForm developers can consume and create XAML island easily. Mm -hmm. So all these helpers for WinForm and WPF are in the Windows Community Toolkit. So there is some kind of nuget package where people can download in their application and we have some controls and people can start to consume some islands of that. So if you are a C++ developer, we have some helpers even for you in the Windows Community Toolkit, something called some application to simplify the things. But the good thing is, you uh, we already have sample for everything, so people can start to play with that. Uh, you can also consume the Win UI uh, 2.0, 2.0, 2.1, whatever, shipping in some island as well, right? And you can create your own custom control, and your custom control can be put inside of the some islands. So, do you want a demo? Yes, let's jump, jump sure. into the demo. Yeah, let's see it. Let's do a demo. So, yeah, some heads up. I already installed a Visual Studio that was version that we shipped yesterday. Yesterday. And you're, also, you're I, living in the head, man. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's very fresh bits. You're, you're breaking all the rules about demoing, basically. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sure, so let's open Visual Studio the preview. Let's create a new app. Uh, in this case, I'm going to create a new project. It's going to be a WPF app, of course, .NET Core, NES, this is the, all right, oh, let's keep this name. I'm going to create this. All right, this was to inside and everything for me. Oh, this is black border around the picture. Hmm. This is a back in Visual Studio, man. Interesting. <laughs> What is this black border? I don't know. You will know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look into it. <laughs> sure. So we have our WPF application. Just to make sure that everything is working, I want to create just a simple hello work. Just to make sure that I am in, in, in a stable then test uh, hello world. I'm happy with that. Yes, I will press S5 to see that everything is running. It's not because I don't trust in Visual Studio. I don't trust in all the things that I have in my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm testing every day all when, when we, stuff. Yeah, when we have our machines with all our bits on it, it's, it's always dangerous to do demos on those boxes, but yeah. you're brave. Oh, yeah. We have the WPF application, given we have this hot and reload available on yeah. there. Yes, mm -hmm. a 16.2 feature that I'm going to talk about towards the end. OK, nice. Awesome. Does it work? Is it happening if I change that? Is it working? It is working. Yeah. Love Look it. Look at that. It's crazy. It actually works. Yep. <laughs> All right. So let's start to introduce several some islands to this app. So I'm going to the dependency, right click in here. I'm going to add the new web package for the Windows Community Toolkit. So the Windows Community Toolkit, let's go to Browse, is called Microsoft Toolkit WPF, for example. Yep. Well, we are filtering for that. You will see several new web packages. So a new package for the web view, another new package for the SAML host, another new package with a lot of, with a lot, with several controls. So we have three things. The control package for the Windows Community Toolkit is about just grabbing some UWB control and grab this control into a WPF control to make simple for WPF developer can consume UWB control. They don't have to learn anything about UWB. Yeah, for example, we have the inking canvas, right? So let's go, for example, use the inking canvas. But let me first install these controls. Of course, I set everything. 
I use Rust on Microsoft. All right, so looks like that we have this. Let me double click in the sample. So the one thing I need to do, as usual, is just create an in space for all these set of new controls. I want to call controls equal. So in here I will see some place this Microsoft interrupt no, that one. Microsoft Toolkit WPF your controls. So I have this namespace. Now I can start to use the control that we have in the Windows Community Toolkit for WPF, which is using underneath the Sample Islands. Okay, we have the in canvas in here. All right. I think that's all. This is not going to render really nice, so I'm going just to remove this. What I'm expecting in here is a huge uh, in canvas. So let me press F5. It's running. Ah, I didn't change the any CPU. Just some heads up. Sometimes it's working, but other times it running a WPF application for any CPU is not going to mm. have an stable yeah, run. Right. The reason is because all the UWP uh, control need to run a specific platform, uh, 64 or 86. Right. So the recommendation is just please before to publish anything, just switch this to a specific platform. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I have a pen over there. Maybe no pen. As oh, you yeah, I always have a bag in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this oh, is quirky. Awesome. Wonderful. Awesome. So this is really simple, easy peasy. Let's go to make a thing a little more complicated. So in the last month, we have been working a lot in trying to improve the Summit Island experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing about that is that you can create a Summit Island and put a lot of random Summit control inside that. How you can do that? Using something called the Windows Summer Host Control. Let, I'm going to add a new NuGet package. Add uh, dependency management NuGet package. So the Summer Host, I'm going to install this. All right, we have this Summer Hosting over there. So double click, I'm going to add a new namespace for that as well. Uh, SNL and S. I'm going to call this sumo equals, and we also have this Windows Summer host, Summer host. Nice. What I'm going to do today, uh, right now, is about just yes, using this Summer host control. Uh, and don't forget to switch any CPU. Oh yeah, thank you so much. That's right. Yeah. So this is the summer host control. The summer host control requires one, one property called initialize type. The initialize type is the type of the control that we are going to render inside mm -hmm. of the summer islands. In this case, I'm going to use the windows.ui.saml.controls. So right now this doesn't have IntelliSense, so how do people know what to type into here? What are they? Um, what are they mimicking? It's something that we need to work. Definitely, it sounds like there's. <laughs> it sounds like there's a team at Microsoft that could help with that. But for now, uh, what what do people type in here? Do they just type in the namespace of the, where the, the control lives today? No, they okay. need to type the specific type. In this case, for example, I'm going to render the color picker. Mm -hmm. Control. So, right. so like if you were, if you were in a native UWP app, uh, this is where the color picker lives. It lives under system, UI, XAML, controls. Yep. So as long as you type in that followed by the, the, the name of the control that you want to render, this will place the control into your app. Yep. I'm going to switch to the, to, uh, oh, I don't have any CPU. <laughs> Why? Because WPF.net Core, it doesn't have the, uh, target the configuration target. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Uh, um, I can go into the properties in the configuration manager. Configuration property over there. I can start into configuration manager. I'm going to add a new, for example, 64 is okay. Open settings, okay. Okay, that's all right. So it means that I right now I can just run 64 in here. You got a typo, huh? Thank you very much. Uh, 
Thank you. Comps for food. <laughs> Appreciate the uh, call out there. Yeah, we've got good cash up. <laughs> team, team peer programming here with a team in the digital <laughs> digital world. All right, running this. Here we are. This is a Yay. WP fabrication running a UWP control. All right, this is cool. But what happened in here? Happens that, uh, come on, this is SAML. I'm expecting just to write SAML content inside of my SAML island, right? Mm -hmm. how, can I, how can I do that? So, right, the way to do that is I'm going to add a new project. I'm going to create, a, for example, a controls library, class library, universal class library, something like that. And this is going to be my class library, which is a WinRT class library. Create. All right, and targeting the latest version of the operating system. Why, this is a WinRT component. This is a UWP WinRT component. In here, I can also add a new item. This item is going to be, for example, a Let's go to let's go to use uh, let's go to create a user control. This is my user control. Add over there. Now we have the wonderful sample designer, which is UWP syntax. Uh, in here I can do whatever I want. Okay, I can say a text box. Uh, text block can say test uh, hello world from a uh, wing RT. Right? I can create more fancy UI, but in this mm -hmm. case, well, hello world is good enough. Well, what are, what are you expecting? What are you expecting is right click, right click in my dependencies at a reference have a reference to this WinRT component, right? Okay. Nice. So I have a reference over there. It means that in my WPS application, I'm expecting to consume this WinRT component. Let's see what happens. First of all, I'm going to take a look to the type of this thing. It's called class library. Remove this ba, ba, ba. dot Oop. I prefer copy and paste because sometimes it's really complicated to type in with all the cables that I have in the cable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. People don't see that but I have a lot of cables over there. A lot of cables <laughs> running across here. Yeah. So let's see what happens. So now you're know? hosting that user control that you create. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is really cool because now you, you can wrap any complex thing that you want to build. Sure. And you can take advantage of everything that service built into Visual Studio to make that a good experience. Yep. Run that custom control and you can make an X number of controls work together. And you will see it's crashing. Why is crashing? This mm -hmm. is something I did on Poppers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It is crashing because, yes, there is several things that we need to do yet. One other thing is that when we are generating a WingRT component, and this is this is WingRT com managed WingRT components compiled, is targeting a specific version of the .NET framework, mm -hmm. right? It's not you're targeting the .NET Core three three, uh, three stuff. It's a different implementation of .NET, and we need somehow to tell to the WingRT uh, compilers, hey, okay, could you generate something which is going to be compatible with the .NET Core three? Right. Um, there is a way to do that. The way to do that is just adding this, let me go into the desktop, this file is I switch to, to Visual Studio. Whoop. Oh. Let me do it again. Desktop is a drag and drop. This is should work, right? Should work? Yeah, it's working. There you go. Yay. So right now what I'm doing is just you adding this Thanks to the compiler, these two property that's activating the enable type info reflection and enable X binding diagnostic. I guess that we are going to generate some uh, uh, managed code that is going to be compatible with the .NET. 
all these all these steps are really well documented so i will point to the links later so if i press f5 and this is, is where the risk comes from because it's the first time i'm running this in the preview <laughs> here we go we're gonna, we're gonna find out <laughs> oh what's happened what hap okay let, let me clean the solution for you let me clean this all right right well i clean everything yeah Maybe get wrong again. I don't know. Oh, it's not working with something because something, something is happening. Is a thing. Is, should the file be in the WPF app right now? You put it in. Oh. Mm, no, it's okay. Let so me. The files in the right place. Let me double. Let me double check something. Is that? Sorry. Sorry, did it actually have a reference to that? Uh, yeah. And it didn't look like it was... Manage reference. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not on there. So... I... Uh, well, I thought I did before. I thought you did too, but maybe... Yeah. Uh, maybe it didn't actually get clicked. Give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. Uh, it's not that. Something in the preview. Is not compatible with that. La, just let me just try clean everything. Um, I'm, 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 I'm making sure that we have the my user class library, WingRT, my user control. We have this text box over there. There is no magic. We have these properties in here. So we I clean this before. Let me double double check and clean this so this project as well. Keep, double check that the reference that you made is actually still keeping. Oh, maybe more because right. it, it disappearing makes me a little bit nervous. Before. Oh, there it's, it is. It's disappearing, it's disappearing again. again. Something is happening with Visual Studio. Wow. Mm. <laughs> I believe I told you something about breaking the rule of presenting. Yes, so. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the Those lo rules the Lord of demoing is displeased. <laughs> Those rules exist for a reason. Your, your project has been sacrificed to the Lord. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me try something a little bit. Just, just one last test because I'm very persistent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Let me do something. Let's inst adding a new thing. Okay. Let me add in the UWP Win32 SAML application install. Okay, let me do this manually. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to add a reference to this guy. Or at least you think you're going to. <laughs> well, you're gonna try to I'm, reference this guy. I'm hacking a little Visual Studio. This library is hacking a little Visual Studio. So let's see what happens right now. Drum roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't actually drum roll or this desk will come apart, but too much. <laughs> oh, oh that's no. a good try. That's okay. okay, let's continue. Yeah. I so will so, fix so what, what would we have seen, right? Let's summarize yeah, that for the audience. Text block. Hello text, world, text yeah. block. So, but, but what, what we guess we're trying to, to demonstrate with that is that you, you can have a complex solution hosted within your existing applications and it doesn't have to be composited by taking control after control into your app and then having to somehow make it work together in some friendly UI way, right? Something that, that works together. You can do all of that in a, in a custom control and then just host the custom control and get all the complexity yep. in your application. And I guess the other thing to, to kind of point out, this isn't just about controls, this is about APIs as well for Windows 10. So you can, a, yes, of you, course. you can be calling those controls and I guess we should also put the asterisk of the packaging project. Should we talk about that being important for some of some of that? To yeah, work? I will show you right now uh, all the samples. I will show you some sample. I will show you a win from sample that was working uh, really well in preview seven because it's just uh, five minutes before to start this. Mm -hmm. It's working well because we are actually manually adding all these uh, things. Mm -hmm. So awesome. it's not about using the tooling. It's more about adding manually in there. You can edit that and add it. Yeah. So I'm going to show you that. Okay, let's so do it. we can. So we have this project. It's a WinForms project. Mm -hmm. In this WinForms project, you can find a packaging project, but this is a this is a, the WinForms. 
in this wind farm, we have a huge summer islands. If we go to the wind farm, and uh, I go into the main farm, in here, uh, the design is not working. It's okay, because I preview, but I show you that in the source code in here, I have my Windows AML host. I already created my Windows AML host, and this is instantiating the main page. This main page is this WinRT component. This also WinRT, WinRT component is a little more complicated. This WinRT component have a lot of stuff, a lot of page, mm -hmm. but also have another component. For example, this native component, WinRT component, is an implementation, a simple case, sample case of the uh, side chain panel. So you can render uh, DirectX, latest DirectX content inside of WinFarm as well. Mm -hmm. So this uh, component is going to teach you how you can use DirectX, how you can use a bunch of control that we have in SAML. Awesome. Nice. So if I press S5 and compile this, there we are. Everything is working nicely. This is a WinFarm application. All these contents is UWP. Uh, you can take a look to all the things that we have in over there. You have this picture, the reforms. You have all these nice controls, like the calendar picker, the picker. Whoop, it's, it's our issue with the DPI. Okay. Yeah, there is an issue with the DPI. Okay, we will fix that. So the thing is, yeah, we have this dialog. We have the Acrylian reveal. If you take a look, you will see how the reveal. A fluent design is working here as well. Even yeah, in the you bottom. can see the lighting effects as he goes over them there. Yeah, mm -hmm. more stuff that you can see. You can see all our controls that we have in here and text. All oh, the, the one of the good things about UWP versus WinFarm is the whole reach of our text controls in there. Right. Well, for example, if I write something like hello in a rich edit box control I can also introduce some kind of emoji <laughs> nice. in, in colors it, it yeah. wouldn't be a demo unless we have emojis in it so exactly that's right awesome uh, you're right click you will see this beautiful control contest control that we you have over there nice uh, of course I just auto suggest you unbox all the yeah. thing you can that's see really all these shadows that we are really creating for you uh, animation you have a lot of animations over, over there and everything, all of this animation, everything is working inside of WinFront's application. The layout media, for example, let me show you something. We have images, we have the in canvas that we used to you, you saw before. We also have all the Swanshin panel, this is that SX content, this is only a cycle, but you can create a 3D element moving around. This is WinFront. All right, so where you can get these samples? Simple. Yeah, cat.ns, uh, something like SAML island samples. If you click over there, you go into some kind of GitHub place, and in C, you see some early samples of SAML islands. You have a bunch of samples the C sample, uh, WinFront, WPF, everything is should work. And also, you can find the document documents about how we created this sample, doing all this step manually. Meanwhile, we are working with uh, Dimitri and his team <laughs> improving this developer experience with Visual Studio, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I think there, there's definitely a lot that we can do to make you know one of XAML Islands a really good experience. Uh, in fact, we have a meeting later today to go go into some of that. Yep. Um, and th this this story has been kind of long in coming to developers. I think it's worth kind of pointing out that you know we continue to iterate on it. This this isn't the story that we launched with all of the initial kind of challenges and left alone, we've been working to, to get it to this point and we continue to try to make it better. So I just want to call that out. I think it's, it's come a really long way. Um, it's really awesome. And uh, right now I noticed that this is a private GitHub repo. This isn't an official one, right? So I, I take it that this documentation will eventually move, but I don't want folks to find this and think they found the wrong place. It's not like slash Microsoft at the moment. No, at the moment, because this is something that we are working every, every single day and updating all these samples. This is my GitHub. So the thing is, we will move all these samples into the Windows Community Toolkit. Mm -hmm. So okay. soon, we will do it soon. Okay, I'm awesome. still working on that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right, more stuff. This is the live demo. This is the links that where you can find all this stuff. 
So you want a documentation about Summit Island, you should go to the Summit Island link, you have the sample, you can also find a lot of documents and sample in the Windows Community Toolkit, if you go on to send us some kind of feedback about hey, uh, this scenario is really cool, we want to support that, or, or everything. So you can send us an email to Summit Island feedback at microsoft.com. Awesome. Uh, let's continue a little more with our story. This awesome. is the thing that we have today. Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. Go, go ahead, you finish. Yeah, sure. I guess I want to tell that we are working with the Wing UI team, of course, because we are exactly the same team. <laughs> it's our team, yeah, we are the Wing UI team. We're working with ourselves to make sure that we do the things we should do. Oh, uh, yeah, and we are moving some island to Wing UI 3.0. Um, Please, Ryan, tell us about that. That's right. So um, uh, I, I was mentioning to everyone about uh, WinUI 2 and how it's a control library with you know, primarily controls and some new features that we're doing. But um, the the big shift that we're trying to do with WinUI is get it to 3.0 in the 3 series. And that is going to be the entire UWP uh, framework, UI framework, lifted out of the operating system and not shipping um, in Windows 10 anymore, but shipping independently on a different and faster cadence, um, as well as other pieces uh, of the supporting technologies that uh, UWP XAML uses today, pieces of our input stack and composition and things like that. So WinUI 3 is sort of this uplifting into a standalone, modern, uh, what was UWP XAML UI framework, and that will be the full uh, set of all of the features. Um, everything from data binding to islands to the inbox controls that currently aren't a part of Windows UI, like combo boxes and text boxes and things like that. Uh, we're going to lift all that up and, and ship it uh, ship it as one package, so, which is really exciting. And the promise of that is also the same promise that WinUI 2 series has which is uh, it works on in-market versions of Windows rather than just working on the latest version. So um, it is a huge, uh, you can kind of think of WinUI 2 as like, almost like, not really, I won't want to call it a pro pilot project because it's ready for prime time and it's ready to be used, but it's sort of like the first attempt to get things out of the OS and shipping independently and shipping open source. Now we feel a little bit more comfortable with that model and we're going to um, lift all the rest of it. So it's, re it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's basically the phased approach, right? You, the team learned how to ship an open source with the 2.0 series and the 3.0 series. There's a vision that you're trying to execute that is broader, that brings much more value to the... To That's absolutely developer. right. And you use the word learned how to do it and I would say we're still learning. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing... <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a journey. Um, I don't know if there's uh, folks uh, listening in right now that have interacted with us on the repo, but um, we have a few repo rock stars um, um, that are just, I would say, putting up with us well and watching us grow as we get better at, at doing this stuff. And I think we're getting to a, a better spot now. And so I just want to say thanks to everyone who's who's already um, engaged uh, on your WinUI repo. And when we get fully open source, that is the entire XAML code base out, I think it's going to be a really exciting moment for us. Um, and we're working feverishly to try and get to that point. So yeah, nice. awesome. So let me show you something. So where where can people find information about the latest news about Wing UI? Of course, in the Wing UI GitHub, because we are open source and we are completely transparent about all the work that we are doing. So you can find in here all this information about not only Wing UI 2.0, but also the Wing UI 3.0. And all in here you can find the, even the roadmap. The roadmap, yes. So. In this moment, we're trying to explain all the work that we are doing. Actually, there is some uh, uh, issues or pull requests or whatever. People can start to participate on that. Actually, people are already participating on that. Yeah. A lot of people. Actually, how many users have been participating in the last month? I think we are reaching like 1,000 or something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't have the latest numbers offhand, but it's you know it's it's steady and consistent. So. I read something about eh, we achieve like yes. So we we had our thousandth contribution, which was kind of exciting. Yes, it's crazy. Um, yeah, and actually um, tomorrow we're going to be uh, uh, picking sort of a a set of folks who uh, are following us on the repo um, to get sort of a special gift uh, oh, in wow, celebration awesome. of the of the thousandth contribution. So uh, really if you haven't um, clicked follow um, uh, on our on our repo, now's the time to do it because that's when we're going to look to do it tomorrow. So. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Full heads up. Yep. Good. So let's continue a little more. 
The thing is, with WinUI uh, 3.0, we are going to have this landscape of options for Windows developers. We have Win32, WinFront, WPF, all these frameworks are running a Win32 application model. We have the UWP, right, with all the stuff that we introduced before, which is uh, running a UWP application model. But we have this something new called Win UI 3.0, which is we are not talking about only UWP, right? We are talking about UWP and Win32. Yes, that's a really um, uh, important distinction, I think, for two reasons. One, uh, WinUI 3 is going to be the sort of the UI stack, you might call it, um, of UWP and lifted out. That doesn't mean UWP goes away. The UWP app model and all of the UWP goodness continues on, and that's an area that we continue to invest very heavily in. But uh, when you're writing your XAML and when you're piecing your UI together, um, WinUI 3 will be the, uh, the sort of the future in the area that we invest in the UI stack space um, moving forward. And then the second thing you mentioned was um, where uh, in the past you've only really been able to use UWP XAML in a UWP app. Islands helped sort of bridge that gap and allow you to create sort of like hybrid applications that were a little bit of both. But we're working towards WinUI 3 being something that you can just graft directly onto a Win32 app model. Um, so if you were uh, working on, say, an MFC application and you wanted to um, do a complete UI overhaul or something like that and just have uh, content from WinUI as the primary surface uh, area of your of your UI, um, that's the thing that we're going to be enabling. So um, the WinUI 3 stack is really going to be our big investment area from a XAML perspective in uh, how you go and build uh, user interfaces, regardless of whether it's UWP or Win32. It's a pretty exciting uh, roadmap that we're on. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's, it's really pointing out sort of the breadth of investments the team is making. And this is new new for recent Microsoft, let's face it. We, we've had kind of various levels of investment to various frameworks. And now we're saying that uh, if you're a WPF or WinForm developer, you're getting .NET Core and you're getting access to UWP for XAML Islands and other new good packages that we have. So we're, we're making commitments there. From my tooling side, we're, we're whenever we think about tooling, we think about tooling across WPF, WinForm, and UWP and WinUI in the future. So so we're not just thinking about WinUI. It's not it's not the kind of state we're in where we're just like saying WinUI is where we're going. So you have to come with us to get anything new. We're looking to invest in tooling across the stack. We're looking to empower with with the dot net that we're investing into across all the frameworks and we're going to keep UWP moving forward and we're going to build this new win ui thing that's going to evolve into win ui 3's future that we're, that we're heading towards so i think it's super exciting yeah. no matter what kind of developer you are you're, you're not you, you don't have to jump on the latest and greatest to be on this train that's right but there's certainly a lot of really cool stuff coming in the latest and greatest exactly yep just to clarify a little more what the developer are going to find in the future so let me jump into this slide. So if you are a .NET developer, .NET Core developer, you are going to choose between WPF, WinFirm, WinUI in desktop application, and WinUI in UWP. This is the future, right? So if you are a native C++ developer, you can still use the, com the, con the common controls, you can use the MFC, but you are going to have two new options. One option is WinUI in desktop application, using this Win32 application model with all the WinUI stuff in there, or WinUI in, in UWP application model. And you are UWP developer, you can continue using this UWP, but we encourage to everyone to start into movie a WinUI 3.0 in the future, right? That's right. All right, um, because I really love the living in the edge. So, <laughs> it, went we so well, it went so well last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this week in Microsoft was the hackathon week. Yes. The one week hackathon. What that means means that you you have a crazy idea, you have an idea, and you hire people, another developer from different areas. It doesn't have to be in your team, and you motivate the people and influence the people to make sure that the thing that you are doing is really cool. So. And uh, well, we have a hackathon just making sure that WinUI in desktop is something that is doable, it's not a crazy idea. Um, we uh, spend like one week, including the weekend, in just a room, in a room with a lot of sugar, a <laughs> cafe. Yeah, I saw the emails over the weekend, so I knew you guys were working hard. <laughs> uh, I have something I want to share with you. Awesome. Okay, so 
And I'll say I haven't even seen this, so I'm really no excited one, to see no this. This is the first time when you I in 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 the Win32 app model. Okay, so. this was my it is uh, five, the debut. Sorry, this was my the show. debut. Yeah, go ahead. Five in the morning. <laughs> five in the morning was it, this morning. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So we have this WinUI 3.0 project. This project is a .NET uh, Core 3 project. Mm. .NET Core 3 project, and this SAML that you see in here is the UWP, is the WinUI SAML. So if you take a look to that, you will see that it is SAML, and this is exactly the SAML that for UWP, the SAML for WinUI. It's not WPF. Is wingy wide, <laughs> mm -hmm. so you see that uh, the um, the designer is not resolving for me the type because the designer believes that is a WPF code. Well, it's something that we need to hack. Yeah, th this, this this to be very very clear is a prototype. <laughs> it is hacked together with sugar, <laughs> exactly. And, and therefore, certain things won't work. But this is trying to pr prove to even ourselves, uh, and we and we you know let's be frank with our community. Sometimes we have to do that internally. We have ideas, and we have to go prove them out. And this gave you an exactly. opportunity oh, to try to do that. Yeah. So the, the funny things about about this thing is you have done a code three the UI. The, the only UI that we have is Wing UI. Do, do we don't have WPF, we don't have WinForms. There is no concept of Family Island. It's done at Core 3 mm -hmm. with, uh, in Win32 application model uh, with uh, Wing UI. Nice. So I press S5. Fingers and toes crossed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drum roll. Yeah. It should work. <laughs> it should work. It was working before. <laughs> So we, we have some questions in the chat about Win, Win UI 3. Uh, one of them is, um, will it replace Xamarin Forms? And that, that answer I know is no. So Xamarin Forms yeah. is a parallel project. We, we work very closely with that team, but at the moment, Win UI 3 is not for that. But right. So uh, I don't know if that, I think the question might have been subtly different. I think it was saying, will Win UI 3 replace UWP in Xamarin Forms? Maybe uh, as see. an endpoint, I think is what you're meaning. So I think that there's conversations that we uh, need to have uh, in that space. Um, that could be a direction that we explore. I think right now we're just trying to get WinUI 3 to the point that we can ship something. Definitely, if you were um, uh, a part of the Build Conference this year and you saw some of the React Native for Windows announcements, um, React Native for Windows is going to be a thing that uh, graphs onto WinUI 3 for the native implementation of UI elements for uh, for Windows. So that's that's certainly going to be an endpoint, and uh, I could see that um, I could see WinUI 3 certainly serving as the basis of other um, sort of frameworks like that uh, down the road. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah. something to to keep you know keep letting us know where this brings value to you, right? Uh, I think a lot of times when folks ask us. Is something coming? The question we ask back is, how, how would that add value to your project, right? What are you working on today that needs this? And give us some ideas. Maybe we'll, we'll get inspired to do the work. Um, okay, awesome. And uh, there's one more question about Windows 7. So is WinUI 3 coming to Windows 7? Ah, good question. So uh, the answer is, at least for now, we're not focused on bringing WinUI 3 to 7, sort of I'll call it natively. We've had a lot of discussion about whether or not we want to do that, um, and just given the the size of just trying to even lift it out of the OS and bring it just just to all versions of 10, I think that's going to be our main focus area for now. What I will say though is that we recognize that Win7 support is important for a lot of folks, and we've done quite a bit of sort of customer surveys and, and chatting with you at, at conferences, focus groups, and things like that. We have been working on a, um, a potential solution there that I can't give any more special details about, but it's on our radar, um, and uh, there may be more for us to talk about later on in the year about Win7 support. So we'll awesome. see. Uh, my fingers are crossed and toes are crossed, like Miguel is when he tries to F5 something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, this is working. Yeah. So nice. this is, uh, yeah, Win UI in Win32 model, you will see the, this is a regular window. All the content in here is beautiful. It's rendering. We are responding to all the Windows events. So the, co the compiler is working here as well without resolving all these kind of types. So even more, so we take we are taking care about a lot of concepts of the application, the window wrap, wrapping a lot of stuff, and the our idea is to ship in some kind of templates where the you will you will get some kind of program 
similar to the thing that we, you have to do in WPF, very simple to understand. You are going to have some kind of main page, something like that, and your sample application, something like that, and that's it. This yeah. is what I'm expecting. Using creating WingUI in desktop application exactly in the same way that you can create today WPF. Yeah, I, I guess it, it, it's important just take a step back and reiterate like why this demo is really cool, right? So this is running outside the, the UWP sandbox while taking advantage of everything that we've invested into UWP, its controls, its APIs, its performance. That's the beauty of this. Uh, of course, that's one of the beauties of that. That's okay. awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's great. Cool. That's really exciting to see. Yeah, that's really great. Nice. So this is all the news I have for today. <laughs> all right. That's, that's all. <laughs> awesome. awesome. So I will um, I will say that, that that's awesome. Uh, if folks have other questions that, that are follow up, I'm pretty easy to find on Twitter. Dimitri Lylan, uh, look me up. Miguel and others here also have Twitter accounts. But if you find me, at least I can route any questions that you might have uh, uh, afterwards or any links. And we'll try to update the show notes as well. And uh, anything else from you guys today? Uh, just uh, definitely check out the WinUI uh, repo on GitHub. Um, even though WinUI 2 is, the, the code on the repo right now just represents WinUI 2, we're actually already beginning to get um, requests. We've announced WinUI 3 is coming and we're starting to get new issues, new feature requests for it. And it's really very quickly becoming just a repo for all of UWP XAML stuff. Um, so if you guys have um, uh, suggestions or, or, or want to engage with us in that repo on anything uh, across the full spectrum of UWP XAML features, uh, uh, come there and, uh, and file an issue. I'd right. love to hear from you. Sounds good. Awesome. So well, we, we've covered quite a bit. We actually had a couple of other topics on for today, but I want to keep this in, in the one hour space. So we will probably end right now. And uh, next week, hopefully, we'll talk a lot about tooling. We have quite a, quite a bit of tooling news coming in the various Visual Studio updates that are shipping. In fact, by the time I think we do our next stand-up, I might actually have more things I can demo, which would be really exciting. So I'll save all of that goodness for next week. So with that, I want to thank uh, Ryan and Miguel so much. This has really been great to have you both here. I have a feeling you'll be back many more times uh, yeah. on, a, on a monthly <laughs> basis. So let's keep the conversation going on when, when that makes sense. That's awesome. And uh, if, we'll, we'll see you all later. Thank you so much for joining us live. And and uh, please you. let us know if you have any questions. Take care.